Hey everybody, uh, so in this video we're going to cover using the state decorator in a stencil ionic application. And I've just got the documentation up here because I think it is a really uh, succinct description of what the state decorator is and what it does. Uh, so let's just have a quick read of that here. It says the state decorator can be used to manage internal data for a component. This means that a user cannot modify this data from outside the component, but the component can modify it however it sees fit. Any changes to a state property will cause the component's render function to be called again. So there are some other decorators that we'll look at later that involve uh, supplying data to a component. And so that's what they're saying here uh, explicitly that this isn't for um, things outside of a component to control data. This is specifically to modify data within a component. And the real sort of crux of what this is all getting at is that if you want something that is going to update the UI for your component, you'll want to give it a state decorator. And so we're going to look at a quick example of this just to see what the implications of that uh, is. Uh, so I've created a little example here. Uh, I'm just still using the same Ionic PWA toolkit starter for stencil. And basically I've just set up a little uh, function and button here. And basically when I click on it, I want to change uh, this statement here from hello Josh to hello Joshua. And so if we take a look at the code for that, uh, you can see that I have the, uh, I got a class member set up here, I have a name uh, variable which is set to Josh, and then I have this function here that just toggles between Josh and Joshua, and then I have an ion button down the bottom that I can click, which is going to trigger that function. Uh, so as you can see the default value is Josh and so you'd expect when you click the change name button that that would change to Joshua. Uh, but if we actually just jump back into the browser here and if we click on change name now you'll see that nothing actually happens and that's because we're not using the state decorator. So that value is updating in the, the class here and so if we were doing some kind of logical operations and whatnot in our functions it would have that new value of Joshua not Josh. But the problem is that since this doesn't have the state decorator attached to it, it means that this render function which displays our template, that's not being triggered. So it's showing the old value instead. And so to fix this is just really simple. All we need to do is import state from stencil core and then just decorate this variable with the state decorator. So now if I save that and jump back into the browser again, uh, if we click on the change name button now, you can see that that label changes between Josh and Joshua as we click on it. So you don't need to use the state decorator for every variable that you have. I could have other variables, uh, every other class members down here that I create and I don't need to use that. But if they are going to be updated and you want that change to display in the template, you will need to decorate it with this state decorator. And I just want to show you one more example to really highlight what's going on here. If we were, for example, to put uh, let's get rid of that state uh, for now. So we'll get rid of that. And what we're going to do is we're going to add in another paragraph tag here and we're going to just uh, render out the date in the template. So if I just uh, use some curly braces here and write, well, so this I'm going to say it is currently, and then I'm just going to use, we'll just say date uh, dot now dot to string. And so this should render out uh, the date for us, or it's going to be, uh, um, I think, in seconds. But if we save that, and again, we'll jump in here, we can see it is currently 15511 and so on. So that is the current uh, date, essentially, or rather the current uh, date and time, I believe. So if I click on change name again, we are triggering that function, uh, but it doesn't have a state decorator uh, associated with it. So when we click on it, this render function isn't being called. And that means even though we've got this date.now uh, object here that we're uh, getting the string from, that is still just staying the same. But if I again will add that uh, state decorator back in, I just forgot the at symbol there. So if we jump back in here now, if I click on the change name, it not only updates my name between Josh and Joshua, but you can see that this uh, time value just keeps going up as I click as well. And that's because whenever anything with the state decorator attached to it, uh, whenever any of those properties change, it's going to cause this function to rerun. And that means that any sort of 
JavaScript that you have inside of this render function is also going to be evaluated again. So that's why when we update the name, we get that date value changing as well. Okay, so that was just a quick video to cover the state decorator. Uh, the key takeaway here is that if you want to change a variable and you want that change to be uh, reflected in the template that's displayed on screen, you will need to associate a state decorator with that. And that's going to trigger the render function every time that that changes. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, as always, please do feel free to leave a like or subscribe and I will see you again in the next video.